Hello, and welcome to the channel. Today's story was originally meant to be part of a now abandoned collaboration. However, good friend of the channel and organiser of that collaboration, Jessica, who researched and wrote the script for this story, has agreed for me to share my part with you today. If you haven't already, please consider checking out Jessica's channel, which I've linked in the description. And of course, if you're interested in true crime, please give this video a like, and if you're new here, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thank you, and let's begin. Fifteen-year-old Michael Dillard was living in West Virginia when he would vanish off the face of the earth, and to this day, his whereabouts remain a mystery. But before we dive into his disappearance, let's go right back to the beginning, to 2002, the year Michael was born. As a child, he was often described as lively, and he was known for keeping close to his family, with his older sister being one of his best friends. He had been adopted when he was only four years old, and they could see from the moment that they took him in that he had a bright future ahead of him. He was a sweet and loving child, but he wasn't without his problems. Michael suffered from depression, and it was so bad that he had been hospitalised before to keep his mental health in check. As he grew older, it just continued to get worse. Just a year before he went missing, his mother would be going about her day when she would find a note written by Michael that was intended to be found after he had taken his own life. She rushed to get help and Michael was admitted to a hospital to keep him safe. He would only stay in the hospital for a few days before being allowed to leave, but when he got home, he began to hurt himself once again. This occurred in February and by the end of the month, he was admitted to a mental health program targeted at teenagers struggling with their mental health. He would not stay with his family during this time, but he would return later that year in December 2017 when his winter holidays from school would officially begin. His family were over the moon to have him back, especially because it seemed as though he was making progress regarding managing his mental health. Everyone around him could tell that he was becoming happier, slowly but surely. He returned to school when it reopened on the 9th of January 2018. By the 10th of January, his sister would come to visit him and she would note that he seemed to be having the best day of his life. Everything would change just two days later. On the 12th, after he had returned home from school, Michael accompanied his mother to visit his sister once again. This time, she noticed that something was off about him, but it wasn't enough for her to bring it up. He may have just been having an off day after all. They returned home at around 5pm, and Michael would be helping his mother unload wood stove pellets from the car outside. He wanted to get things done, and so he attempted to carry two large heavy bags at once, which his mother didn't like because she was scared that he was going to get hurt. She told him not to do that, but he continued to carry more heavy bags into the home. She told him off once again, but this time he reacted differently. He dropped the bags that he had been carrying and told his mother that he wasn't going to listen to her. After he said this, he ran behind the house. Thinking that he just needed some time to calm down and realise why she was concerned, his mother continued to unload the car, and once she was done, she headed behind the home to speak to Michael. To her concern, he wasn't there. She rushed to contact other family members, thinking that he may have made his way to one of their homes. But when they had not seen him either, alarm bells started to go off. The police were contacted and Michael was officially reported missing. The police gathered all the information they could and quickly created a search party. They believed that he had run off into the woods behind his home and they were concerned because he had barely anything on him and a storm was approaching. He was last seen wearing an orange jacket, a maroon t-shirt, a black tank top, jeans, black and red Deadpool socks, red shoes and a necklace that looked like a dog tag. He had a total of $2 on him, and he had left his phone and glasses at home. 
The search party made their way into the area. However, as nighttime was approaching, the storm would finally hit. At first, it was only rain, but the search was forced to be abandoned when it quickly turned into heavy snow. They could not see well in the area, even with their equipment, and it posed a risk to the search party if they were to be outside for a prolonged period of time. They had no choice but to give up for the night and hope that Michael had managed to find safety from the severe storm. The next morning, the search began once again and police deployed dive teams, search dogs and helicopters to find the missing boy. This would turn up nothing and Michael was still nowhere to be found. Despite intensive searches of the area and interviews with people close to Michael, police had very little to work with. His phone was searched and nothing indicated that he had planned to end his own life or to leave his family. His sister has stated that he was impulsive though, so he may have just made the decision in a second. People at his school reported that he was seen attempting to pour water into his backpack that day for no reason and that he told people he was going to visit his dad. This raised concern because his dad had passed away some time ago, and people were even more worried for him when he tried to get on the wrong bus when going home. His backpack was found in the school, but there was nothing in there that proved important to the investigation. The only other possession of Michael that was discovered during the search was his jacket, the one that he was wearing on the day of his disappearance, and it was discovered just 300 yards away from his home. The location where it was found had already been previously searched. However, it is possible that investigators simply missed it as it likely would have been covered in snow after the storm. The area it was found in was home to many abandoned cars, leading people to believe that Michael may have taken shelter from the storm in this area. However, police did search the abandoned vehicles and there was still no sign of Michael. His family has hired a private investigator to dig deeper into this case, but still, no new information has come up. The disappearance of Michael remains a mystery, and if he is still alive, he would be 20 years old today. A $3,000 reward is being offered for any information that leads to the discovery of Michael, but considering no one has come forward and no new evidence has come to light, it seems that what happened to Michael may forever remain a mystery. Thank you for watching. If you found this story interesting, don't forget to give the video a like and if you're new here, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to stay informed whenever I upload a new video. Don't forget to check out Jessica's channel too, links in the description. If you want to support the channel in other ways, you can become a member by joining my Patreon or YouTube channel membership for exclusive content and early access audio to my true crime videos before they go public. Speaking of which, Here's a shout out to those who are already supporting my work. Needle and Fur, The Alabastard, Mr. Gently Benevolent, Amanda, Krista, Shamu Smith, Angie Thompson, Holy Holy, Lord UK, Gaming Since the 90s, Marina Bellotta, and CSD. Thank you for your continued support. Until next time, take care and goodbye. For now.